chapter 4 verse 7 Oh, scion of the Bharat dynasty, Arjun, whenever there is a decline of virtue, an increase of vice, then do I manifest myself? Then the questioner has quoted chapter 2, verse 12. It is not that I did not exist at any time, nor you, nor these rulers of men. And surely it is not that we all shall cease to exist after this. So here comes the question. Acharya Ji Pranam, in chapter 4 verse 7, Sri Krishna says that he will come forth whenever Righteousness is on decline. However, in chapter 2, verse 12, it is mentioned that Sri Krishna is always present. How should one interpret the coming forth of Krishna when righteousness is on decline? Does this statement have any significance at an individual level? Or is it said in the social context? Also, in Christianity, it is believed that Jesus will come again on the judgment day. Please help me understand what all this means. Krishna is always present as the very source of existence. Or, we could say, within man, as the center of mind. That's how Krishna is always present. Just as, irrespective of what is happening, within a circle, the circle will nevertheless always have a center. Right? The circle might be black, the circle might be painted blue or yellow. The center remains present and the center remains untouched and uncolored. Hmm? Greatly virtuous deeds are taking place within the circle those greatly virtuous deeds have nothing to do with the center. The center remains as it is. Evil acts are taking place within the circle. The center remains untouched. In some sense, the center does not even exist. The moment you try to point at the center, you have pointed at something tangible, and the center of the circle is not tangible at all. Hmm? Even though it is the center of the circle, yet it is in another dimension compared to the circle. For the circle can be drawn, seen, filled up, and the center is absolutely untouchable. A circle has dimensions and the center is dimensionless. So even though the center is related to the circle, the center is very much the center of the circle, yet the center does not really belong to the same dimension as the circle. Getting? So, in that sense, in a very abstract and passive and indetectable way, 
Krishna is always present. Doesn't matter what is happening in the mind. Whatsoever is happening in the mind is for the sake of a final culmination. Hmm? That culmination is nowhere evident in the mind. But without the presence of that ultimate culmination, the finality, that target, that objective for which everything happens in the mind, nothing would have happened in the mind. The mind is movement, right? Why does the mind move at all? The mind wants to reach somewhere. Where does the mind want to reach? Is that place within the mind? The mind wants to reach somewhere. Every thought, every action, every motivation, every emotion rides on a desire. Is directed, it's targeted towards something. What does the mind want? Surely not something that is within the mind, not surely something that can be within the mind. Hmm? So the very presence of the mind and its activities is an indication that something beyond the mind certainly exists. Else why would the mind have so ceaselessly kept wandering and moving and, and searching and asking and desiring and every single creature in the world is asking, moving, desiring hmm? when you look closely at that desire you come to see that the mind is in search of something beyond itself that the very existence of the mind is proof of the existence of something beyond the mind had the mind been self-contained, had the mind been self-sufficient, then we would have led very satisfied lives. But are we leading satisfied lives? We are not leading satisfied lives. And that itself shows that the mind is gripped by a strong and very certain feeling of incompleteness, insufficiency. The mind is absolutely certain that it lacks something. That something that the mind lacks, that something that the mind is so compulsorily drawn towards hmm, is called the ultimate, it is called the truth, it is called the ending, it is called the pinnacle. It is also called as Krishna. So Krishna is always present in that way, right? And that is an abstract way, that is an immaterial way. Why is that way immaterial? Because all material ways are within the mind. And here we are talking of Krishna as the one beyond the mind, the one enticing the mind. Hmm? That enticement is very central to Krishna. The very word Krishna comes from movement, traction, karshan. Hmm? From that comes the word Krishna. When that movement is in the direction of sublimation, then you call it Utkarsh. That Karshan is Krishnata. When that movement is away from Krishna, then you call it Apkarsh. A movement away from Krishnata. Apkarsh. So mind moves and these are the only two ways in which the mind can move. If the mind is moving towards Krishna, then it is the utkarsh of mind, hmm? an elevation of mind. Whereas if the mind is drifting away from Krishna, then it is a fall, then it is a debasement to be called as apkarsh. 
Hmm? So that's how we explain when Krishna says that I have always been there. But then why does he say that Yadayadai dharmasya glanirhoti bharata abhyutthanama dharmasya hmm? bhavami yuge yuge in this verse he makes it appear as if he comes over only sporadically as if his appearance is merely episodic hmm? this too has to be understood The questioner has said, how does one interpret the coming forth of Krishna when righteousness is on decline? You see, what does it mean to say righteousness is on decline? Mind is moving away from Krishna. Mind is moving away from Krishna. Krishna is the center of the mind, right? Krishna is the center of mind. As soon as the mind moves away from the Krishna, the center applies a spring-like force on the mind. Remember simple harmonic motion? What is the relation of the force on the particle exhibiting simple harmonic motion with the distance from the center of the motion? We used to say f is equal to minus kx, right? So force is directly proportional to the distance from the center. And the minus sign indicates that the force is in opposite direction compared to the direction of the motion. So if the mind is moving away from the center, the force will be towards the center. Right? If the mind is moving away from the center, then the force will be towards the center. And the force towards the center will be greatest when the mind is farthest from the center. This is what Krishna means when he says that when evil has risen to the highest, then I come over. Are you getting it? The pull towards Krishnatva, the pull towards peace, the pull towards the ultimate is the highest when you are farthest from the ultimate. Hmm? Does that mean that the center has suddenly come into existence? The center was always there. The center was always there. But the center was not making its force felt. If the particle is at the center itself, then would the particle experience any force? Tell me, if the particle is at the center itself, does the particle experience any force? So the center does not make its presence felt if everything is alright. The particle is centered, all is hunky-dory, the center remains silent. The center, you must remember, in spite of being the all-doer is still the non-doer. So the center is not at all obsessed with doing. The center says, if the world is running in a nice way, everything is smooth, all cool, why should I trouble myself? Fine, good, good. But then, it's a world of duality. And what does duality mean? That the world keeps swinging, this way to that way, that way to this way. Right? Just as we have mood swings, mind swings. There are crests and troughs. Hmm? You look at most of the periodically occurring events and you find that they are cyclical. Don't you find that cyclicality? Right? 
be it the stock market, be it politics, hmm? be it even solar radiation. What we find is that the curve moves like this, ups, downs, ups, downs, ups, downs. Yeah. Krishna is saying, when the maxima is achieved, when the things are the darkest, that is when my manifestation is the brightest, the strongest. Not that Krishna does not manifest himself at other times or other places. But his manifestation will be the strongest when things are at their darkest, when adharm is on its, at its peak. Then the manifestation of Krishna will be the strongest, most apparent, most visible. To whom? To the ones who are experiencing adharm. You must remember this. When Krishna says, I appear, hmm? Sambhavami Yuge Yuge, I appear. To whom does he appear? Does he appear to himself? To himself, he is omnipresent. To whom does he periodically appear? He appears periodically only to those who experience those periods, who experience those swings, those oscillations. So when you are at your worst, it is then that the probability of change striking you is the highest. It's just that change will not strike you as per your desire. Krishna struck Duryodhan as well. Hmm? Duryodhan was very much a recipient of Krishna, was he not? But then Krishna didn't quite strike Duryodhan the way he would have fancied. So it is indeed a great way to receive Krishna or to call Krishna to yourself by being the most wretched creature you can be. become an epitome of evil and it is quite likely that you will attract Krishna to yourself but then he will not come to you with the Gita he will come to you with the Sudarshan Chakra hmm? Paritranaya Sadhunam Vinashaya Chadushkritam he will not come to redeem you he will come to destroy you Vinashaya Chadushkritam are you getting it? Now the question comes, so does Krishna appear only sometimes? Well, it depends on you. It depends on you. Because the appearance of Krishna is not an objective phenomena. Krishna is omnipresent and omnipotent. To you he may appear at one place at one time, to him he may appear at another place another time. It's his job to be present wherever dharma is at its weakest. Hmm? He does not come in one fixed shape or size or with one particular name. He comes in myriad names. He is parallelly present at thousand places. We are not talking of some human character here. I hope we are clear about that, right? 
we are talking of not Krishna but Krishnatto, the essence of Krishna. We are talking of truth itself. Hmm? So it's not that we are talking here of one particular prince called Krishna who historically surfaced around the 10th or 12th century BC. No. We are not talking here of history. We are not talking here of persons or personalities. Hmm? At best we may say that we are talking of a principle. Though it is not even a principle. It is more subtle than that. Getting it? Hmm? So, when situations take you away from peace, or to put it more honestly, when your own decisions or indiscretions or ignorance take you away from peace, hmm, then you cry out. And that is an invitation for your inner Krishna to come and redeem you. Paritranaya sadhu nam. That inner Krishna might manifest himself in the form of your own energy. You find that your intentions change. You find that your own desires take a turn and motivate you to live differently. That is the appearance of Krishna within you. Or Krishna could appear in form of an event, place or person outside of you. But irrespective of whether you get charged with Krishna to within or you experience a particular instance of Krishna outside of you, the event will take place only when you want it to take place. Hmm? Only when you want it to take place. Otherwise, if it has to take place irrespective of your desire, then it will take place in the same way as it happened to Duryodhan. Duryodhan didn't quite want Krishna. Krishna happened to him. But then Krishna doesn't illuminate you. Krishna strikes you like lightning. Hmm? Like a thunderbolt. Are you getting it? If you have paid attention to all this, you would also might known what is the whole concept of avatar. We know of a few incarnations. We know of a few incarnations. The fact is that incarnations are always happening and happening everywhere, albeit not to everyone. Always and everywhere, but not to everyone. They happen only to those who are ready for them. On the battlefield of Kurukshetra, is Krishna really an avatar for a Duryodhan or a Dushasan? So Krishna is there, but he is not there at all for the you know, many thousands of soldiers and warriors. They are looking at Krishna like one looks at an ordinary mortal. Here 
he is one arjun's charioteer so krishna is there but not for everyone similarly do not ask whether krishna will come in this age or when krishna will come or when is the day of judgment when christ will be reborn such speculations make no sense a better question is am i ready for a krishna or christ am i prepared to receive krishnat and if you are ready then the avatar will be right there in front of you or maybe within you an avatar will be right in front of you and right in front of only you to your left side is your brother to your right side is your sister and neither of them will acknowledge the avatar they will say you know some person some man further it is not necessary that the avatar be necessarily human let alone a man hmm depending on who you are depending on what your mental configurations are the avatar could be a cat <laughs> now you know why indian mythology talks of varaha avatar matsya avatar what is all this any form any shape can be taken hmm the avatar could be in front of you as a book as a wall as the open sky as a bird a river anything it depends on your readiness and receptivity when you are ready you will find him and he will not come demonstrating or declaring loudly that he is the avatar you need to have the eyes you need to have the love you need to be arjun like are you getting it so the matter is subtle it is not as if sometimes god is in the mood to dispatch his favorite son to earth and only sometimes once in 20 centuries he sends him over now go and you know turn around the organization it's been a victim of neglect since 20 centuries i have been busy with my own samadhi you see and so the young scion of the family comes over and says right this is my father's fiefdom this is my family business you see and i'll not turn it around i am jesus it's another matter that the workers union has other ideas and they take him and these are childish stories obviously right the essence of christ is the same as the essence of krishna in fact the myth associated with them as superhuman beings representing the highest is again very much in agreement with each other hmm 
is this clear the avatar is not an objective happening outside of you the avatar is an expression of your own readiness to receive godliness when you are ready the avatar happens to you either you have to be like arjun to receive krishna or you have to be like duryodhan hmm it is with respect to duryodhan that krishna says vinashaya cha duskritam it is with respect to arjun that krishna says paritranaya sadhu nam clear we miss krishna because we think of krishna as the one who happened to arjun get rid of the concept of the person called krishna and it's quite likely that you will receive the energy the truth called krishnatva there is no age no place no space where krishna is not present <laughs>